Hey everybody, Russ Barkley here again with another commentary on ADHD, this time in response to a number of requests I've received through my email to cover OCD and ADHD and how they're related. So let me just key up my PowerPoint here. The boy in blue is going to get started. Uh, and yes, luckily so far I seem to have survived the election, but we'll see. It's still pretty early. So back to our topic. Is OCD related to ADHD? And if so, how? Of course, OCD refers to obsessive compulsive disorder. And as you know, in obsessive compulsive disorder, there are a variety of symptoms, including obsessions, compulsions, and their physical impact on the individual's well-being. Obsessions are unwanted, intrusive, and repeated thoughts, images, or urges that cause anxiety. Examples are things like fear of germs and contamination, fear of losing things, fear of aggressive thoughts, unwanted thoughts about sex, religion, or harm, or a desire for things to be symmetrical. Compulsions, in contrast, are repetitive behaviors. Notice the, the distinction. Obsessions are thoughts. Compulsions are acts. So these are repetitive behaviors or mental actions that are performed to reduce or prevent anxiety. Common compulsions are things like excessive cleaning or hand washing, repeatedly checking things, compulsive counting, having to order and arrange things in a specific way, and hoarding. Now, research shows that in patients that have both OCD and ADHD, the most common obsessions are those of symmetry, while the most common compulsions are those that involve hoarding. Although patients with both ADHD and OCD often show a wide range of these symptoms. Now let's go on and take a look at the overlap of these two disorders. First, we know that OCD occurs in about two to 3% of the population. In contrast, ADHD is two to three times more common, being about five to 8% of the population, depending upon the age we look at. Of course, it's higher in children, around seven to 8%, and lower in adults, around three to 5%. We find that of those with OCD, about 12 to 25% have ADHD. The figure seems to be somewhere closer to around 20 to 25% that have ADHD. What does that mean? It means that people with OCD are about two to five times more likely to have ADHD than people in the general population. So having OCD does seem to increase the risk that ADHD will go along with it. But notice the majority of people with OCD don't have ADHD. Now let's reverse the ascertainment and look at it the other way. Of those with ADHD, only four to eight percent have OCD. That's about double the base rate in the population. And in some studies, such as my own Milwaukee Longitudinal Study and others, the rate of OCD was not different than in the typical population. But let's look across studies and say that, okay, for the sake of argument, it's somewhere around four to eight percent of people with ADHD also have OCD. Notice something. Most people, the vast majority of people with ADHD never have OCD, but they're slightly more likely to do so. Now we'll see that there are some things that complicate that statistic, but for now, let's just leave it where it is. Thus, notice that looking at each disorder, the majority of people with one disorder do not have the other disorder, but some people do. The risk is greater, as you can see, if you have OCD, that you're also going to get ADHD along with it, than the reverse. If you start with ADHD, that you're going to get OCD. It's known, at least I know it, as a lopsided comorbidity. It's not equivalent from one to the other. It seems to be a somewhat higher risk of having ADHD if you start with OCD, but even then, mainly in childhood, less so in adolescence and adulthood. Complicating matters even more 
OCD is substantially related to tic disorders and Tourette's syndrome, which we know also coexists with ADHD. So is that the reason for this overlap? If we control for tics and Tourette's syndrome, would the overlap go away? I don't know. Haven't seen any studies that have done so. I certainly would think that it would diminish it somewhat. Just as with Tourette's syndrome, ADHD is a very common coexisting disorder with OCD. That is, it's more common than it is in the general population. But it is far less common than we see in adult OCD, as I've said. So now the reverse is not true. The most common comorbidity in ADHD is oppositional disorder and learning disabilities in childhood. And then by the time we get up to adulthood, it's anxiety, depression, antisocial personality, and substance use disorders among others. So the pattern of comorbidity between these two disorders is different. Notice that, suggesting that there's a lot going on here that needs further explanation and exploration than just some straightforward statement that ADHD and OCD are common comorbidities. They're not. They're unusual comorbidities, but they can coexist and it does look like if you have one, there's a somewhat greater risk of having the other. Now, let's take a look at some other similarities and differences. If we look at the brain, what's interesting is that both disorders seem to involve the same or similar brain regions. For instance, both disorders involve the frontal lobe, particularly the prefrontal cortex. Both of them also involve the basal ganglia. By the way, the arrows only indicate approximate locations, not exact locations, because this is not a very well-drawn brain, quite frankly. The, both disorders also involve problems with the thalamus in its development. And finally, both disorders seem to be associated with problems with the cerebellum, though somewhat more in ADHD than in OCD. So they share common brain regions. And both disorders seem to have reduced brain volumes in the frontal and prefrontal areas, as you see by the blinking arrow there up front. Okay, but how are they different? Well, we know that in OCD, the basal ganglia is larger than it is in ADHD. Whereas in ADHD, it's the opposite. This part of the brain is smaller. Also, we know that in OCD, the anterior cingulate is larger and overactive. Whereas in ADHD, it's either not different in size or it's smaller. And generally, it's found to be underactive. Notice that we're seeing the opposite problems in the brain with each of these disorders. Also in OCD, the frontal networks up here at the very front part of the brain, especially the prefrontal cortex, it's overactive in OCD, but in ADHD, it's underactive or underreactive when challenged by a task. In ADHD, this may be leading to an unregulated default mode network toward the rear part of the brain and which is involved in mind wandering, daydreaming, and mind blanking. So we know that the default mode network is much more likely to be involved in ADHD than in OCD, but we need a little more research on that for sure. But I want you to notice something here. Even though similar brain regions are involved in both disorders, the findings for them are opposites. In OCD, larger and overactive. In ADHD, smaller and underactive. Okay, let's look at some other differences between OCD and ADHD. Neurochemically, they're different. We find increased dopaminergic activity and decreased serotonergic activity in OCD. Whereas in ADHD, 
it's the opposite for dopamine. ADHD involves decreased dopaminergic activity and possibly decreased activity of norepinephrine. That is not seen in OCD. By the way, these neurochemical differences are also reflected in genetic differences. Genes that regulate these neurotransmitters also differ between the two disorders. Genes for uh, serotonergic activity and even glutaminergic activity seem to track more with OCD, whereas genes for dopamine and norepinephrine activity track with ADHD. The drugs that are used to manage the two disorders are quite different, as one would guess from what I've already said about neurochemistry. The drugs that seem to help OCD the most are the SSRIs, the serotonergic selective reuptake inhibitors. On the other hand, those drugs are not helpful at all for ADHD. In ADHD, the stimulants and the norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, known here as the NERIs, are more helpful. Whereas in OCD, those drugs would not be helpful at all. And it's possible that in a subset of patients, stimulants might even exacerbate OCD symptoms. We know that genetically, they differ to some extent. They're both quite heritable, meaning that genetic influences account for the majority of variation in the disorders. But let's take a look at the numbers. In ADHD, about 60 to 88 percent of differences in individuals are due to genetic differences. In OCD, that figure is about a third to a half less. In OCD, it's about 45 to 65 percent genetic factors accounting for differences among people in severity of OCD. Now, Another thing we can calculate from studies of twins is not just heritability or genetics. We can look at within family shared factors, and we can look at whether or not non-shared or unique events play a role. Here we also see differences. There are shared genetic factors involved in OCD, not much, but about 16% of variation in the trait can be related to within family factors. What might those be? Hard to say. Maybe sort of neurotic habits among family members. Not sure what that might be, though. In ADHD, there are no significant effects of within family factors. Both of them seem to have a small role for unshared, non-family factors, but it's rather small, and we don't need to talk about it. So the conclusion here is that both disorders are highly heritable but ADHD is even more genetically influenced than OCD. Both disorders do seem to involve similar brain, re brain regions, as you saw in the earlier slides, but they're opposites in terms of volume and activity. And they're also opposites conceptually. We think of ADHD as placing toward the impulsive spectrum of symptoms, that is the impulsive end of that spectrum, whereas we see OCD placing in the opposite direction toward the more compulsive aspect of the symptom spectrum. And this, of course, is reflected in their brain differences as well. So think of them as two different disorders, one involving impulsivity and the other involving compulsivity. Now, it's possible that in some people, both can coexist, as we've seen, but it's not going to be very common, and that's what the data seem to suggest. Finally, one of the most confounding factors in research to date with regard to the overlap of ADHD with OCD is that, to my knowledge, no one has studied the other attention disorder in ADHD. That attention disorder is what we now call cognitive disengagement syndrome. Please see my lectures on my channel for this disorder. But as you know, it involves being more internally preoccupied with your attention, whereas ADHD is being more externally attentive and preoccupied. So very different. ADHD being more of an externally governed disorder and cognitive disengagement syndrome being more of an internally preoccupied disorder. Makes sense then that CDS, 
might be a much more common attention disorder in OCD, but nobody's looked. Why does that matter? Because no one diagnoses CDS in practice or in research unless they happen to be studying it. But in general, other researchers, such as those studying OCD, they're only going to calculate how many people have ADHD. And CDS is often mistakenly misdiagnosed as ADHD inattentive presentation. So do you see what's happening here? It's very possible that claims that ADHD occurs more often in OCD might be reflecting misdiagnosis. And instead, it might represent a higher rate of CDS in OCD, which to me would make a lot more sense than garden variety ADHD being the most common comorbidity. But until it gets studied, we're just not sure. So if you know of anybody who needs a research project, there's one for you. What's the rate of CDS in people with OCD? Okay, well, I hope you found this slide presentation to be useful. I'm sorry if it's run on just a little bit longer, but hey folks, this ain't TikTok. If you want slogans, go to TikTok. If you want a scientific understanding of disorders, specifically ADHD, come to me. We do a little bit more in-depth work here. All right, as I always conclude, everybody, live well, be well, and take care. This is Russ Barkley bidding you adieu. Bye for now.